Hello and welcome back. So what I want to do now is just demonstrate layer styles. So, so I've got this background layer here. I'm going to come over here and select T for text tool. And I'm going to increase the size of my font to 200. Okay. And let's see. I'm going to go ahead and set the color. Yeah, color like that's fine. Just a blue color. And I'm just going to click in here and type in layer styles. Okay. Move this over. So layer styles. Now. We can come down here, see where it says effects, and if we hover over that, it'll say add a layer style. All right, so we have all these different layer styles. Now we can hit one individually, or we can just hit blending options, and it'll just bring up the entire window. And we can just, you know, change all our different layer styles as we go. Okay, so let's just move down the list here and play with these. Um, the best thing to do, again, is just go in here and just play with everything, all right? So anyway, Bevel and Emboss. So you can kind of make this pop out like a little bit like uh, you know mock 3D, right? It'll put some edges on it and some lighting, all right? I'm gonna increase the size a bit. You can see how it really puffs out like that, and that's no good. But something like that maybe. I'm gonna soften up, make them nice and round, all right? Now see where it says shading here? Use global light. Now there's a global light, so multiple settings um, in multiple layers will all use the same angle lighting, okay? And that can come in pretty handy. All right, so as you can see, I'm changing the light around here. Um, let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and chisel hard. So um, if we turn the softness down on that, it really looks like it's been carved out, okay? All right, and you know, that doesn't look so good, but whatever. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that down a little bit and set this back to smooth. Okay, so it's beveled a little bit as well for now, okay. Okay, and stroke. And stroke, um, when it's set to one pixel, just puts a one pixel outline around your object. All right, now you can choose for it to go on the inside or the outside. Okay, if I go on the outside, see how it's going to keep puffing out like that? All right, if I go on the inside, see how it just slowly eats it up like that? Yeah, okay. So, and you know, and maybe that would look okay if we throw the bevel back on just to do it. Okay, um, let's see, we're looking very 90s. All right, so. Um, now, Inner Shadow. I use Inner Shadow a lot. I'm going to actually turn off Bevel and turn off Stroke to demonstrate Inner Shadow here. Um, I use Inner Shadow a lot to blend objects together because sometimes the edge just doesn't look like it matches, but you can actually put it, a shadow on the inside of your object, okay? And it might uh, blend it in a little bit more. So, you know, of course, we have options here to um, the opacity level. I'm going to go and turn it on normal so it's nice and extreme so you can see it. And I'm going to turn the distance up a bit. You see how that Inner Shadow is coming in? See that? Yeah. Okay. And choking it will actually make it harder and harder. And if you pull it back, it'll actually be softer, more feathered. All right. And like I said, um, you'll see me use these inner shadows a lot, just blending objects into scenes. All right. Inner glow. I'm going to turn off inner shadow to show you inner glow, inner glow. I'm going to go ahead and turn the opacity all the way up. Set it to normal so it looks really extreme. And turn the size up. Okay. See how it's, the inside's glowing like that? Yeah. Inner glow. Okay, and um, let's see here. Satin. Satin is a way to just kind of add some texture. Okay, you can turn the contour way up. Let's throw a pretty extreme curve on this thing. All right. Okay, and you can uh, mess with the distance right here. And um, let's see, we'll actually we'll revisit the distance here, which will better give you a better visualization when we get to gradients here. And the size. All right, and well, you can see actually the texture right there. So we want to kind of blur that out a bit, like so. And you can see it just added some texture right there. Maybe if we throw a bevel on that again, might look make it look, you know, almost kind of like marble or something like that. Lots of things you can do with it, though. I'm gonna turn that off. Color overlay. I'm gonna turn off bevel. Okay, cover color overlay actually just overlays it with color. So now we have red text. All right, we can actually turn that down a bit and see how it'll blend. All right, there are times when this is really useful. It just depends on the application, of course. Gradient overlay is just like color overlay, except for you can use color gradients. All right, so you can see we have a gradient there. Now, we can set the color gradient. Um, so we have some presets right here. You can load more right in here. I'll go ahead and load metals, all right? And just hit OK, and there's this nice metal, okay? Now, you, you can actually move these around. You can change the color. Okay, like so. I don't know why I'd want to do that if I want this to look like metal, though. And you can click around here and add more. Maybe we want another dark spot right there. Like so. Okay, just to do it. Okay, and I don't want that there, so I'm going to pull and drag it away. Okay, I'm going to hit OK here. Now, we can actually throw the bevel back on again. 
and maybe the stroke. All right, it's just kind of giving like that metal look. Now, if I come back to gradient here, we can actually, you know, change the angle of the gradient, okay? And this is a linear gradient. We can actually make it a radial gradient so that it comes out from the center, okay? And we can adjust the scale, okay? You can see there's that center circle right there around the S and the R. I can increase that like so, okay? All right, so that's gradient. Um, pattern overlay is the same thing as gradient or color overlay, except for with patterns, okay? And again, you can define your own patterns and we'll get there later. Um, yeah, okay. This looks really 90s right now. All right, I'll turn that off. So let's see your outer glow. Outer glow, um, you probably are able to guess what that does. It creates an outer glow. So I'm gonna turn the opacity up so you can see this really well and kind of turn the spread out and then the size way up. And whoa, that's a major glow. All right, so I'll turn it down, turn the spread down a little bit, and it's just glowing a little bit. Okay, and um, you know, I have to be honest, I don't use a lot of these for to make things glow or to make a drop shadow as much as I use them for other things. Okay, um, I just think there's nicer techniques for getting good looking shadows, but there are times when this is the perfect tool. Just depends on what you're doing. Speaking of drop shadow, let's look at drop shadow. So in this case, we're gonna just put a little drop shadow around the text. All right, so how far away? Distance like so, and you know, Maybe we'll do a little bit of spread and a little bit of size, like so. Okay, and there, now we have some, you know, shadows behind our text, okay? And there are times when that's actually really nice. Um, there's some other techniques for shadows that I'll show you a little later on that I think are a lot nicer, but a lot of times I still combine them with the plain old drop shadow. Okay, so that's taking a look at layer styles, and you'll see me use these a lot in a lot of different ways.